with Vince McMahon said to have had an unusual reaction to the hush money scandal and more. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for July 19th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. For A&E's episode of WWE Legends, The Undertaker touched on the sacrifices he made for the industry he loves, saying this business is tough. It's not an excuse, but it's tough to be a star in the business, because the only way you do that is you've got to be on the road and you've got to be gone. I love my children and hopefully they understand how much I do love them, but I missed out. I missed out on so much those early years with them, because I was pursuing this dream. It's just so hard to be that guy on the road and then come home and try to be a dad. Reacting to Wardlow's defense of the TNT title against Orange Cassidy on Dynamite last week, Jim Cornette criticized AEW on his podcast saying, I don't even want to talk to anybody about the first segment of the show except one person. The person that was most harmed, most offended, most damaged by the segment that opened Dynamite this past Wednesday night, July 13th. They actually booked Wardlow against the company mascot, our little dog Pockets. And I'm not going to talk about the match because it wasn't a match. It was a masturbatory, self-indulgent fantasy by the put gang. As Ray Phoenix appeared to be hurt on Rampage, Dave Meltzer pointed out on Wrestling Observer Radio the severity of this injury. It's funny because like Ray Phoenix on the Rampage show, so the deal with Ray Phoenix was that he, I guess, hurt his ankle taking an atomic drop, which is totally safe, but it just happened. It was a fluke thing. Although, he's okay. The match was taped Wednesday. He did wrestle Friday. He wasn't limping Friday, but it was scary. He was limping pretty bad at the end of the match on Wednesday that aired on Friday, and I thought, oh god, another injury, right? He apparently is okay. But there is still, there's so many people hurt in AEW, and they do need to change stuff. I don't know if it means more matches. I don't know what it means, but something. There are too many guys getting hurt. Talking to Joe Foe in the ring, Rory McAllister of the Highlanders said that his partner Robbie created a similar persona to that of Bray Wyatt's prior to Bray's debut. That was Robbie's idea 100% because he went over and worked in the UK and stuff, and he was dressed up the same way, looked the exact same. He went to WWE, and all of a sudden, after they told him not to go back, here comes Bray Wyatt doing Robbie's whole shtick. With it previously said that Michael Elgin had been arrested in Japan for stealing protein powder, the star would refute this, claiming he did not steal, was not in jail, nor being deported. Now the Wrestling Observer has provided some clarification. What I do know that I didn't know yesterday, there was an incident at the gym. I don't know what the incident was, but there was something at the gym. I don't believe it was stealing protein powder, but I can't say that 100%, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. The police came. He was evidently detained and let go and Noah for a day. He was not in contact with Noah for a certain period of time for a day and missed one show. And then they found out and they unbooked him and that is kind of the story. But he was not arrested or anything like that, not charged with anything. But whatever it is that actually happened is still being kept quiet, so it's probably something. Whatever it is, it's not something that they want out, that anyone wants out. His argument about the stealing protein powder is that that would be the stupidest thing to do because the dojo has protein powder. The one thing he would not be in need of is protein powder, but there is something that happened in the gym and that much we know. With a reveal that Jeff Jarrett will team with Jay Lethal to take on Ric Flair and Andrade on July 31st for StarCast, Meltzer explained how this was worked out given Jarrett is with WWE. With Jeff, he doesn't have a talent contract, so legally, even though he's a vice president of the company, he can wrestle this match. I know a lot of people think that because Conrad Thompson in the past had booked WWE guys, including Rick, to do major things at his conventions and then WWE pulled them, that that is going to happen here. But that's not going to happen. This has all been worked out. The cat 
When it comes to the investigation into sexual misconduct allegations against Vince McMahon, The Observer claimed that HBO are working on a project regarding this development. HBO Real Sports is working on a Vince McMahon story based on all of the different things that have come out and they're pretty heavy hitters. We'll have to wait and see what it is. And there's other people working on it too. Salon Magazine did a piece, Variety did a piece. There wasn't anything new in those pieces though. I mean really, the guys at the Wall Street Journal did a tremendous job because they really have broken stuff and they actually, you know, they did a great job as far as sources within the board of directors to get that information that everyone else has, including me, has written about, but it's based on the sourcing that they got. Despite a seemingly negative story about McMahon on the horizon from HBO, The Observer pointed out that ESPN's coverage of WWE has been fairly positive. Raw this week opened with a promo from Titus O'Neil, where he praised the company as a safe space. Meltzer feels this was done due to the scandal, as he said, obviously, like, Titus does great, great work. I have great respect for Titus. Also, we know why this was done this week. Some people have asked, do you think this is in reaction? Of course it is. It's in reaction to the bad publicity that Vince got, and this is how Vince fights back or, you know, responds. You know, more charity work, make it more visible. It was very interesting that ESPN just honored him for that because I think, in a weird way, it shows that from a mainstream standpoint that if WWE was toxic because of Vince in mainstream right now, they would not have done that for fear of backlash. So the reality is that if it was a major sport and the owner had done these things, they would not have, you know, praised them for their charity work this week. But because it's wrestling, they did. ESPN did. I mean, the timing of it I thought was like, wow, this is some bad timing. But the reality is, it is bad timing. But it also tells you that ESPN didn't think it was such a big story that it looks bad for them to be doing this. When it comes to Vince McMahon's reaction to the Hush Money scandal, Meltzer noted that you've got all these heavy hitters that have written about it, and they're the only ones who have really broken what I would call news news on the thing. And they're still working on it too, but maybe HBO Real Sports will. But they're more of a television visual thing, so I think they are probably looking for interviews with different people, and I think I know what the story will be, and they certainly will invite Vince on as they have in the past in situations like this. I don't think Vince does this one. You know, in the past he did. I don't think this time he does it, because they've been usually Vince. That's the only thing that's been very different about this story is that usually when Vince is accused, Vince will lash back and fight back, and Vince has been very quiet. The big thing is he tries to discredit the reporters, and he is not at all here. In in fact, even in the internal memos, they never said anything negative about the reporters. They say there is a story and they're taking the allegations very seriously and usually Vince will go after anyone who, the people who speak against him and the reporters in the publication. I know he can't really go after the Wall Street Journal for obvious reasons because of their affiliation with Fox and everything. He can't do that. But he can go against the reporters, and he is not. And that to me has been a very interesting and telling part of the story. In an injury update on former AEW champion Kenny Omega, who's been out of action since November, Fightful reported that the tentative plans that certain staff was made aware of was that Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks were slated for a six-man tag program for September's All Out pay-per-view. We've yet to confirm this with AEW officials, and anything could change, as is the nature of pro wrestling. With WWE set for another pay-per-view, the company is apparently not all that excited about the card for SummerSlam, as WrestleVotes reported. In the most WWE of ways, I had a source tell me this morning, they really don't like the SummerSlam card. They being the people who put it together. Um, what? The card for the event is as follows. Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar in a last man standing match for the undisputed WWE Universal title. The Usos vs. The Street Profits for the undisputed WWE tag title. Liv Morgan vs. Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. Bianca Belair vs. Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Belt, Bobby Lashley vs. Theory for the US title, Pat McAfee vs. Happy Corbin, Seth Rollins vs. Riddle, and Logan Paul vs. Miz. With him previously taking to Twitter to say change is coming and blacking out his profile and removing references to AEW, it was thought that Fuego Del Sol could be done with the company. Now he's given fans an update in the form of a video. Here's the clip. 
I delete my tweets and change my bio and suddenly rumors and speculation swirling about what's next for Fuego Del Sol. Well, let me tell you, wrestling is all about presentation and momentum. And a year ago, I had all the momentum in the world. And when I got my contract, I thought that meant the right people had finally recognized just how damn talented Fuego Del Sol really is. I thought I'd have a new opportunity to showcase this talent. But the few hard to come by TV matches I got didn't go my way. I start to feel my momentum dying down. I start to realize commentators aren't taking me seriously. I start to wonder, are matchmakers taking me seriously? I've been called a lovable loser, but that is never what I aspire to be. I might make funny content to put online because it's more productive than sitting and catering and complaining or being complacent, but to watch new guys come in and skip me in line, to watch my own friends leave the company, it made me realize I need to switch up the presentation. I need to change my momentum. So if you're not taking me seriously, hell, opinions change when people do. But if you hadn't been watching AEW Dark, you may not realize the changes I've been making. New look, new move set, added muscle, and a brand new attitude. <laughs> but if no one else is going to tell you about it, I'll talk my shit and tell you myself. I see the long list of guys you're calling the future of professional wrestling that are ahead of me when they won't outwork me, they won't outwrestle me, and they damn sure won't outtalk me. But I'll throw Humble Fuego out the window and I'll tell you my damn self. I'm pissed off for greatness and I will refuse to wait any longer for someone to showcase this talent when I'll do it my damn self. You want to know what's next for me? I'll tell you where you can find this new attitude next. Now that I have your attention, I want you to turn it to AEW Dark tomorrow night while I wrestle my old rival, QT Marshall. Because regardless of whether it's Dynamite, Rampage, Elevation, or Dark, Lucky for them, AEW is paying me to stick around a little bit longer, but I don't think they realize the new fuego they're getting, because this fuego is going to spit this fire, turn up the heat, and take over the wrestling world, even if I gotta do it all by my damn self! When Alexa Bliss returned to Raw in May, she was part of a match against Nikki A.S.H., where color commentator Corey Graves said she lacked urgency, which many saw as Graves taking a shot at Bliss. In the F4W Online Daily Update, Meltzer said, Graves, and this was clearly told him to say, went off on how Bliss is not as good as she used to be in her last character. So in theory, that's supposed to be a storyline. In some unfortunate news, the wife of the late great pro wrestling manager Bobby Heenan, Cindy, has passed away at the age of 74. Former colleague of Heenan's, Mike Tenay, took to Twitter to write, sorry to report the passing of Cindy Heenan, an incredible wife, mother, and grandmother. Her devotion and support for Bobby was unparalleled. Survived by her daughter Jess, son-in-law John, and grandkids Austin and Hannah, our times with them were the happiest and most memorable. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.